Warning, these will be the thoughts of us and our featured guests. Please do not judge us. Hi there. Sorry for butting in into the podcast. So this podcast is brought to you by Anchor. And I just want to promote Anchor for all the listeners out there. What is Anchor, you say? Anchor is free. Okay? Totally free. So don't need to worry about that. What else? Anchor has basically all the creation tools that you'll need and you want to kickstart that podcast that you've been dreaming all this time. It helps it get it on the road. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Anchor takes care of that too. So you just have to create an account, start recording, and edit everything within the Anchor ecosystem. That makes things a lot more easy. Start creating. You can download the app too. May that be on Apple or Android. There's no bias there. If you want to get working on your computer, you can always go to anchor.fm. Again, the website is anchor.fm. Creating your podcast has never been easier. Thanks. Back to the show. Uh, we'll definitely want to, you know, have that combo with you about that. All right. I'll just chime in wherever I feel like I can. Yeah, that, that's cool, okay. Cool, cool. Yeah. Okay. So um, who wants to do the intro today? Oh, the warning? Uh, yes. I can no, do that in that... post. I have that yeah, in yeah, post. Yeah, I'll yeah. do that in post. That's what I was going to say. Oh, that'd be good to do it now. You guys just, to, just to keep it. That way I introduced everyone. That way I, sh- I introduce everyone. Everyone, you guys, you want me to do that? Sure. No. Or you problem. want me to do the warning? And you introduce each one, everyone. Yeah. Like we, we do like a warning. Blah blah blah. Alan, Jacob, and Marcos. Uh, I'll okay. make it simple. Okay. Okay. So. All right. Just give me whenever. In five. Three. Life is intertwined with technology. Let's figure it out. Welcome to Life, Tech, and Sundry. Welcome to Life, Tech, and Sundry. Tonight, we have the big three and a special guest. Uh, From the top all the way to the bottom on my list over here, we have Alan. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Glad to be back. Uh, Jacob, thanks for coming on the show with us. And then there's Jacob. Greetings. Nice to be with you today. All the way from the power. Oh, no. Thanks to the power of Reddit, we have Jacob. Right, Jacob? Positivity. That's right. Random Reddit posts got me here today. <laughs> yes. How right? Re- okay, okay. That, that's enough. That's, that'll be a question for later. Uh, and Mr. J, Josue. That is I. And of course, What's up? yours truly, you can't forget him. Mr. Love. J. Yes, <laughs> you, can't, you can never forget him. That, that just sounds like me, Marcos. Yes, you can't forget him. I'm, I'm, I'm acknowledging Yeah, you're I talking approve. about me. And then there's oh, me. Oh, but then there's you. Yeah, Marcos. Yes, and then there's me, Marcos. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so um, show notes. Show enough? Yes, let's start. Okay, so. So are, are we going to read uh are each others or are you gonna read your own uh i don't know do you guys want to share the class share it to the class or yeah, how do you just, just just uh just read your your own i guess okay so then yeah are you okay with that push. ellen are you okay with that jacob yeah cool yeah okay so let's go with number one of course that one's me study genetic mutation inherited from neanderthal could help protect against severe covid-19 cases that's, that's the title just just think about it now open quote researchers researcher found a certain the one with what okay no, 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 yeah okay researcher found that a certain 
Hopla group, Hopla group, a population that、uh, shares common DNA, was roughly 22% less likely to develop a severe case of COVID 19. The Hopla group is common in populations outside of Africa. The study notes as Neanderthal evolved off the continent. The Neanderthal DNA, believed to protect against illnesses, illness, was found on the 12th chromosome, study,、uh, 12th chromosome, while the DNA discovered in a previous study, hmm, 12th chromosome, while the DNA discovered in a previous study that researchers theorized increased the chances of severe illness was found in the third chromosome. So, you know, you get, you get something good on the 12th and something bad on the third chromosomes. The researchers said that Neanderthals and their Asian sister group, the Denisovans, became extinct less,、uh, 10,000、uh, years ago. But their genetic impact still lingers today. The study suggested that the Neanderthal DNA that protects against severe illness may have occurred due to past epidemics that were caused by RNA, by RNA viruses, a category that includes the coronavirus. Read more at www.thehill.com. Forward slash policy slash. No, no. <laughs> That's the、oh, link will、man. be in the show notes. So. You know, evolution, right? And <laughs> survival of the fittest gave us a lot of qualities that, you know, there w a s a lot of viruses, even more than today. I keep forgetting that we've had a hundred years with vaccines. So, yeah. But I think、uh, to a certain extent, like, yeah, survi- survival of the fittest does,、um, does take,、uh, you have to take it into account. But、um, I, I do believe that. Um, you know, the human body has created different types of antibodies in order for us humans to actually fend off and fight off certain diseases. Not all, but you know,、uh, quite a bit of them. If, if that's,、uh, that's something we, we've、uh, noticed or known about. And I don't, I haven't seen, t-、uh, well, again, trying to make memory of the, the Spanish flu. Uh, I don't remember seeing any sort of information about us eradicating、uh, the Spanish flu. I think the best we've done was try to live, live through it and, <laughs> and try not to die from it. And I think our bodies have adapted quite well from it. And I think the, this finding with the Neanderthal DNA it should be something that, that helps us to further our, our knowledge about how.、Uh, How,、uh, I guess, Neanderthals coped with the situation or didn't cope with the situation.、Uh, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts about that? Jacob, what are your thoughts? Well, my mom's actually really into genealogy. So she always gets these DNA tests done and that shows you where you came from and what your DNA is. And everybody outside of Africa has some parts. Of Neanderthal DNA in them. I think in my case, it's like 4.3%. It's a little above average. You kind of feel stupid when you first hear it. Oh, that you're like a Neanderthal. I don't know why there's a negative like, connotation, connotation with thinking、right? you're a Neanderthal, but <laughs> finding out you're above average Neanderthal, it's kind of disheartening. But everybody has it in them. That's not from Africa. So, oh,、uh, interesting. Okay, okay.、Hmm. I think what they would need to do is study the people who have above average Neanderthal DNA. Take a、hmm. big sample group of them and see if they, they are less likely to get COVID 19.、Uh, just to elaborate, like,、um, there's、uh, both. There's a, in the 12th, they found this quality, this trait. On the 12th chromosome and a negative a- a- attribute on the third chromosome. But the third chromosome was already previously known. But because of COVID 19, this, this, in, in, this desire to do more research, or I don't know how this 
became ironic, I'd say, that they found this. Ooh, there was there was these kinds of diseases over ten thousand years ago, and the human, the Neanderthal, all those groups of individuals. The what was the other group? Uh, it, it's a weird name, but they all it, just by um, just in the document it said that wherever they were they were found, they were in extremely pandemic ridden locations. May that be by other animals or other humans proto humans and that's just not only people were were sick back in the day and there weren't vaccines so either you survived and those traits passed on to your to your kin to your children so it's just it was so so strong that it stayed within the chromosome that's what i'm trying to say you know what that makes me think about that was how far we go to sanitize everything and immunize everybody could that weaken us genetically down the line oh, i think so to I create a need a, right yeah yeah i think that's a double-edged sword i mean you you start living in a bubble there has to be some sort of negative effects i mean extremes a society are, in a bubble right i mean extremes are bad i mean you if you're crazy healthy god forbid you eat a burger because then you might you know croak and die because of a heart attack or something like that or your blow chunks, right? Yeah, because right, the food I mean, isn't up to snuff. Right. I mean, uh, I re- vaguely remember, you know, people that have been or are vegetarian or vegan. Uh, God forbid they they have something in in their food that is uh, meat uh, of some sort, and then you know they feel they feel really ill, you know, shortly after. So I mean, even if it's cooked on a surface where you know meat was there before. Or there's a meat type of product involved in the situation and the preparation of the food. Yeah, they feel super ill because your body just isn't accustomed to it anymore or at all. So, I mean, I can see there's a negative effect on people just sterilizing. I mean, everything that they come into contact with and, you know, the day they ever step outside of that bubble, you know, it's like, let's see if, how your body's going to react to that, you know? And I mean, you can say the same thing about people that don't don't have a cleanly uh i guess you can call it um a cleanly way of doing things uh i do believe that back in the day um in i guess you can say medieval europe and uh in that sort of time frame you know bathrooms weren't in the city weren't something that was uh, uh accessible where you would do your business so i mean or if an animal were to die where are they going to go bury it stuff like that i mean i do vaguely remember in um the history books where it's like a horse dies you know uh in the middle of the street in the city well they're going to leave it there because you know there's no garbage no there's no uh sanitation department for that there's no city. incentive to clean <laughs> who's paying who to do it right so i mean when you don't have those uh those parameters uh, placed, uh, you you get those negative uh, after effects of you know being too dirty or not cleanly enough. And then if you go to the other extreme where you're sterilizing, sanitizing everything, uh, I mean there there's probably going to be some sort of negative effect as well, where your body isn't going to produce the same amount of antibodies or resistance to certain things. So that I that's my you know stance on on those uh, on that. I don't know what what do you guys think i think that sounds pretty good you got to keep like a middle path you got to go down the middle because obviously these guys having lived in a filthy area in the past has stayed in their genetic lineage clear till this day so it's, it has to have some benefit but living like a filthy mess like those like in medieval europe that you were talking about that's obviously not healthy either. So I, I right. think you're right. Finding some kind of middle way is the way yeah, to go. Definitely. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. I mean, uh, so many people are females died when, um, you know, doctors were were there, you know, helping them, uh, helping women when they were giving birth, you know, but they they helped in one way, but didn't help in another since they didn't have that procedure of washing their hands. And many people, many <gasps> An women died. Right, because of infections, because they didn't wash your hands. It wasn't until they figured, hey, soap, you know, cleaning your hands. And then the rate of death in women that were giving birth 
you know, decrease significantly. And, you know, something so simple as washing your hands, you know, goes a long way. And the terrible part yeah. about that is I heard the guy that discovered that washing your hands would severely reduce infant mortality. They thought he was crazy. Right. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> they didn't want anything to do with them. Yeah. They Why? called him a quack. Why? The, oh, Galileo. Oh, right. Galileo, the same thing. Oh, my yeah. God. Socrates. Yeah. Right. Any good thinker. Society's right, right. Not, society doesn't like it forward thinker yeah, because thinking they aren't caught up to it yet yeah, yeah right critical thinking isn't isn't uh you know looked upon so kindly sometimes <laughs> when they um, wonder what yeah, ideas I mean, we're missing and, out and again, on today I think going back that we to probably the, think somebody's uh, crazy medieval for. europe type of uh <laughs> um so like medieval europe uh time frame you know black plague comes around uh, I mean, people were dying left and right. One of the things they had to do was burn the bodies, or you know, they were going to get caught up and caught up in in that situation where they might get infected with the black plague. And uh, yeah, that, that's misfortunate, you know. And but again, uh, I think at that time, vaccines were also like a no go. It, it well, literally, <laughs> right? It, it basically, it, it you did see to a certain extent the survival of the fittest. Because if if you were perhaps not immune to it, or maybe you were asymptomatic, I mean, I'm not quite sure what the numbers on that is, but or the circumstances on that was, but a lot of people died, and the people that didn't, you know, uh, they probably did, uh, you know, genetically speaking, they must have uh, had some sort of antibodies that were created in their organism their body in order for them to fend off that to that sort of uh, disease but um i mean at this point it's all speculation for me at least because it's not my forte there are two fruits for thought that i want to give real quick one as a an example of the medieval times specifically in england uh, there, uh i read this on on a book that they were saying i don't remember which one they were saying that for insulation during the winter just for your floor to keep everything as as warm as possible during the winter season and as carpeting they would put on on, on public resting places like pubs or anywhere that you know rich people wouldn't go as a cheap way for insulation and like a rug for people to sleep on the floor just in case uh they would put hay dirt and uh horse manure to <laughs> to keep your you know you warm during during the colder seasons just in case, right? Your comforter <laughs> yeah. wasn't warm enough. Can you imagine that horse manure, dirt, and hay? I mean, I'm not against the hay, but still, horse oh, manure. I, I mean, I can I can believe it. I mean, so whatever cozy, you know was a right, whatever is a virtue. You know, they didn't have much, but they had hay and you know cow manure. <laughs> what about you, Mister uh, Mister J Jose? I like Big Flurry. <laughs> I mean, now you get that, but but <laughs> but yeah, but but yeah. So you're two sides. Like, there's there's no defense. There is nothing to defend. It's a fact. It's a fact. Yes, but uh, I forgot what we were talking about. Were we still talking about the article, or were we still yes. about? the article yeah, in itself like cleanliness and the quality of of trait and passing traits oh is what you do you get a hazmat suit and right, right. you grab you grab your little backpack full of hand sanitizer say that and you, you don't right and you don't grab like you grab like a bazooka and you shoot everything in sight with the hand preach, sanitizer preach. There you go. yes sir <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's how you keep clean. There you go. And boom goes the dynamite, my friend. Boom goes the germs. Yeah. <laughs> the pressure might might be a, might be too much, but it's okay. It's far thanks. Okay, not cover not yourself happy. in it's it okay. too. That way you're like greased up. Nobody. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Exactly. Lubed up and ready to go. With with <laughs> <Yeah. PL. laughs> Don't worry. Oh, that man. point roll one doesn't matter. 
Oh man. <laughs> yeah. No, but that I think that's pretty interesting, Mr. J. Yeah. I mean, I've never thought of the bazooka, you know, situation. Oh, that's I because mean, I like you don't it. you gotta think outside the box. Outside yeah, the, no, outside the bottle. You can't see you see if I were just to grab a regular old like little spray and it's effective, but it's not it's not a bazooka. It's not Mr. J effective, you know? Exactly. We, we want to we want to tear the box <laughs> apart. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh man. We want to take the box and use it as target practice. You're going to say you're going to get slimed with Purell. <laughs> Basically. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean. <laughs> but oh, on the man. real so, note, I mean. So, so yeah, just wash your hands. Yeah, but imagine <laughs> would say. that that trait was Marco, not a, Marco, a common Marco, Marco, thing. Marcos, Marcos. Wash your hands. Yes, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We're not talking about before. We're talking about now. Wash your hands. I know, no, I know, but, I know that torta was nice, but you still have to wash it off. Right. So, Josue, do you do you believe that to some degree, to some degree, uh, genetically speaking, uh, you know, the descendants of, in this case, Neanderthals, as the, you know, uh, segment we're reading, um, or the article well, we're reading I mean, off of? I, I would, I would base my because from the looks of it it's actually like something just found i would say it's as true as when they say that certain blood types have certain effects or different effects from getting from corona and they found out later okay. that, that was untrue it doesn't matter what blood type you get it's more of a personal level because yeah um so i would say this is as true as that for now so, oh, so it's just they, to, to a certain degree like almost speculation exactly so okay. I until okay. they like you know fully put out a test be like listen we tested this amount of people and we found this result to be true then it's just hearsay right. so you think they're they need more time to actually investigate to, to have more of a concrete type of evidence yeah okay now that makes sense yeah i mean it is pretty new i mean we've only been what uh about a year and a couple of months or has it been yeah, two well, years already it's, 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 it's like i said it's, it's very similar to with the blood type thing with the corona uh i know Mar- marcus always like oh you know yeah oh you're good our cousin that's Later. a nurse told us confirmed it that's yeah why. but then i found right. out that that's untrue that it's, it's right, more right. of a personal thing than uh than a blood type thing okay no that yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, everybody is different, regardless of what type, what blood type you are. So, I mean, oh, yeah. something's going to affect you differently. I mean, for me, when I was thinking about it, I would say because like maybe they say that it's because always the most common blood type there is. Right. So they'll be like, oh, you know, these people don't get it as much. Well, your pool size is gigantic, is ginormous. Right. So that's so, yeah. why it looks so small. <laughs> exactly. Okay. I okay. got you. Okay. I got you. Well, guys, if if you if you'd like, we can jump over to um, question or point number three. This is uh, Josue's, uh, Mr. J's um, two piece. Yes. Oh, not number yeah. two. No, we're gonna we're gonna do one each, and then we're gonna move on into Jacob's segment. Okay. So uh, number three, if you if you will, Mr. J, thank you. Oh yes, it says. Oh yeah, scientists accidentally discovered strange creatures under half a mile ice of ice. To get to it, Smith and his colleagues had to melt 20 tons of snow to create 20,000 liters of hot water. When they they then pumped through a pipe, lowered down a borehole that took 20 hours to melt through the ice inch by inch. Finally, piercing through the shelf, next they lowered an instrument to collect the uh, sediment along with the GoPro camera, but the collector came back empty. They tried once more, still empty. Again, nothing else, uh, nothing came easy here. Each round trip of the instrument took an hour. Later that night in his tent, Smith watched the footage and recognized a rather glaring problem. The video shows a dis- uh, descent through 3,000 feet of blue green ice, which suddenly terminates opening up into dark seawater. The camera coasts around another uh, 1,600 feet until the seafloor finally comes into view. Most likely light-colored sediment, which Smith was after, but also something dark. That dark thing turned out to be a rock, which then turned out to be another rock, but then which the camera hits with a thud, 
tumbling face down into the sediment. Uh, the camera quickly writes itself and scans the rock, revealing something the geologist hadn't been after hadn't been after at all. It was something highly improbable, impro improbable, improbable life. Uh, wrong place for collecting C4 muck, but the absolute right place for a one in a million shot in fi finding life in an environment the scientists didn't reckon could support much of it. Smith is no biologist, but his colleague, uh, Hugh Griffiths of the British Antarctic Survey is, is. When Griffiths watched the video footage uh, back in the UK, he noticed a kind of film on the rock, film on the rock, uh, likely a layer of bacteria known as microbial mat, an alien-like sponge and other stocked animals dangled from the rock while Studer's uh, cylindrical sponges hugged the surface. The rock was also lined with the wimpsy uh, filaments, perhaps a component of the bacterial mats or perhaps a uh, peculiar animal known as a hydroid. Read more at the wired slash story slash scientist. I'm gonna do it all. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> no, but good stuff, man. Good stuff. That That's super interesting. So, Marcos, do you want to go first? Take a crack at it? But wait, hold on. I just got to ask. Did he ask? Oh, okay. Did he ask consent for the ice to be penetrated like that? What, <laughs> three, 4,600 feet of it? Or, I mean, 3,000. Well, they melt 20 tons of snow. So, that's thick. That's very thick. Was there consent? Was there cons no, I'm kidding. Nah, yeah, that, that's quite a bit of uh, ice or melting just to get down there, you know? Um, I, I, I mean, life finds a way, like that guy said in Jurassic Park. But <laughs> what I'm interested in is how everything got frozen. 3,000 feet. Three, and did it go bit by bit or did the cold? I don't know. You, um, What I'm trying to say is that something else, like something else in that article is catching my eye you know if you're catching my drift uh, but um i don't know the the ice itself even though they just glossed over it it's something that interests me in the sense of thermodynamics because i you know my my engineering side is is showing but that's what it's just i'm curious about the ice life finds a way and power to it that's what i'm trying to say okay <laughs> um do you, do you mean that literally or figuratively marcos and verbally <laughs> And verbally, <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, um, I mean, I, I'm gonna give the you know the floor to to Jacob. I wanna I wanna hear his two cents about it. You know, I'm not coming up with a whole lot on this. All that I could think of is an alien-like sponge. Seems like some of my past lovers. All of this, nice. <laughs> Are they also stuck funny. underneath the ice? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? It wouldn't surprise me. Like some cold oh, people. <laughs> you know, you know, hearted. I hear you. You know, it'd be nice you. if uh, it'd be nice if they said they next found a a, a pineapple right, uh, under the right. sea. <laughs> under the sea. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh, uh, so be nice. I mean, so I mean, dude. Due to the to me not be having a forte in in this uh this background of, of um of the article or not knowing what <laughs> what's going on with the article, but um I mean my two cents for this would be uh I think we we yet we have yet to discover like in its total totality the the amount of organisms that actually live on the earth. I think we've only scratched the surface um to a certain degree i mean we know more about space than we know about the you know ocean floor so this doesn't surprise me but at the same time it's like uh it, it's interesting that that you know even now in 2021 and you know going forward we'll, we're still gonna be finding new organisms that live on earth that we just don't know about and uh, uh yeah it's interesting I think that there, there's probably a plethora of, of, of 
organisms like this SpongeBob. I mean, the Sponge-like. Um, <laughs> you mean this bobbing spawn? <laughs> this bobbing <laughs> spawn. Bobbing Maybe sponge. We'll- Right, maybe we'll find uh, a Patrick Star of some sort, or <laughs> or something. But it, it is interesting to to read about, you know, these these crazy discoveries that you know that are happening all over the world. I mean, of all places, right in the icy tundra, you know, where everything is bitterly cold, and you find there's living a reason organism. why they're calling a bitter cold place. You'd you think know? there's no life there, right? Right. Just goes to show you how organisms do adapt to their environment and how they they all latch onto each other for you know gasping for life so yeah that's my two cents i mean i i what do you think Josue? i mean you're the one that picked out this uh this article no uh, yeah uh what i think is it's a lot of water <laughs> It's a whole lot of water. And you like McFlurries. Of course. Um, But I mean, I guess it just goes to show that as long as you just keep on digging, you'll find something. I'm ready for the mole people, people, you know, something. (laughs) I once again repeat my statement. I'm curious about the composition within that ice or how that ice, you know, over the time. There's there's some data right there that they can. Yeah, Marcos, 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 I'm going to have to say that, yeah, I'm going to have to bring you back. <laughs> the ice was the least listen, you know, listen, highlight listen, of the article, listen. but still yes. that ice, though. Listen, it's the least part. It's least important because they penetrated through it. Yeah. No, but don't they don't they take those uh, segments of cylinder ice to hopefully hopefully they to did. study it? Yeah, to study it. Right. Like how many? Because uh, I'm pretty sure know. they're like um, they're like the rings on trees where you measure how much how many years those layers of ice have accumulated by i mean correct me if i'm wrong you know fact check me uh, if anything. i don't think it, i don't think so Uh-oh. i like to say because like it's ice you know no I, I think i think because like because like once you get it to water then you can like the most you could do is identify what's inside of it and see like how long it's been frozen but not like right. the layer like each their specific layer uh, more of like maybe they do it like bit by bit themselves and this is all predicated on what i saw on discovery channel one time where i did see scientists like drilling or you know taking out cylinders uh ice I, cores I say, yeah ice cores where they they actually they're able to to look at the layers and or the depth of the ice that they they dug into or or uh, you know extracted and they basically can tell the what type of uh, air I think is is encapsulated or the the water or you know just organisms that might be stuck in there and now you speak um, my the, language just speak my and language. the age and then the age of of the ice or whatever but again this is just me trying to vaguely remember what the hell I saw on Discovery Channel I agree uh, yes you know don't quote me <laughs> I quote <laughs> you yeah, that, I quote you because that was my, that's my idea. I agree. So, I mean, that's just me. That's just me trying to remember. But I mean, it, it is interesting because, you know, like you said, uh, keep digging and you're going to find something at least. <laughs> so not going to find China, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> hollow Earth, Hollow Earth much? Nah, I think they should bottle idea. up the ice and capitalize <laughs> on it. Throw a light ice sticker on there. There you go. Capitalism it's ice. Minus. It's the ice with living organisms in it. You could sell you that. Go. Yeah, I want that for my aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I'd say in, in Antarctica, ice drinks you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or, oh no, ice ice melts you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> There you go. Oh, there no. you go. All right, so this sounds... living thing in there melts you. This sounds horrifying. And like that's why it lives in Antarctica. Like this is an episode of the Twilight Zone. <laughs> <laughs> yes, when yes. You capitalize yes. on living ice, then you drink it and melt to death. That's a Doctor Who episode. <laughs> now that's refreshing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's like this. Is, this has been sponsored by Coca Cola. Oh, we need the little bear dancing around with the penguin having an ice cold Coke. <laughs> Not sponsored. Yet. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> oh, I'm man. still waiting for that rack of Coca Cola to come in, or my the <laughs> specialized Coca Coca Cola bottle. <laughs> A J, uh, Mr. The J edition. edition. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, man. So you guys want to want to go on to the next one real quick? Yeah. Yes, please. All right. So we'll, we'll jump mm. on to um, part number five and then we'll move on to Jacob's segment so we can ask him a couple of questions and have him, okay. you know, give us his uh, his uh, his in- input. Yes. All right. So good. I'm going to be gone for like two minutes. I'll be right back. Yeah, don't worry no do your thing man all right so i'm gonna read off uh, the title uh this is my segment so um it's number five off the show notes uh travel strategy and how and credit card points how i was able to go from new york to mexico and back almost for free so that's the title um so i'm gonna read real quick and this is just me reading my own stuff right now all right so during a global pandemic for some traveling might be something that's been on your mind while being stuck at home. While stay dreaming, looking outside your window at a bland, monotonous panorama, wishing for better days ahead, or while gazing at photos and videos of your past trips on your phone or scrolling down your feed on IG or some other social media app you might be spending way too much time on. Looking at beautiful, picturesque landscapes or locations you might want to visit to capture that perfect IG pic so you can share with the world. Perhaps taking the time now, rather than later, to plan and strategize might be the best course of action while we all wait for the world to reopen. I was fortunate enough to travel outside the country and spend a month in Mexico. Despite all the challenges and taking all the necessary precautions, I was able to fully enjoy and satiate my desire for traveling and seeing my loved ones once again. A major factor that I attribute to facilitating my traveling are my credit card points. Implementing a strategy to maximize every dollar to get the most points possible is a hobby that I find rewarding. Even though everyone is in a different place financially and travel goals differ from person to person, in my opinion, there aren't many things that can beat the feeling of satisfaction of being able to book two nonstop round trip tickets from New York to Tokyo for just $50 each ticket. or wherever or wherever your heart your gut or your head is telling you to travel to it all starts with a strategy a credit card strategy a youtuber slash blogger by the name of Asebi is someone i look to for information on this matter my hope is that you might take this information and put it into action so you can travel without breaking the bank so yeah guys and uh it says first five credit card strategy for travel and this is by a youtuber slash uh what's it called a uh, youtuber and a blogger named sebastian uh his uh handle is ask sebi so basically um yes, yes. for for the people that um that don't know um li- like i like i mentioned in in the segment basically um so in 2019 uh april of 2019 you know a year before the pandemic or i guess months before the pandemic however you want to slice it uh my brother and i uh wanted to go have been planning to go to tokyo for for a while now and uh or for a while back then and uh basically uh i I was trying to figure out what would be the best way to get there without you know breaking the bank so doing my due diligence and researching online i came across not only asebi but other credit card and uh and bloggers uh youtubers that talk about credit card points and um and strategies on how to facilitate that without you essentially uh paying for the ticket outright so just really quick um and there is a link in the show notes underneath the actual article um so what i did back then when i went to tokyo where i was able to buy two round trip tickets for my brother and i uh you know non-stop directly from jfk to hanada airport uh i was able to to score those tickets for 50 dollars each and um after i i was able to accomplish that uh i said this is this is definitely the way i, I want to do travel forever now like i i don't see myself 
you know, really dishing out money um, outright to get tickets or buy tickets to go on flights. And uh, this time around, this year, even during a pandemic, was no exception. Uh, I didn't want to be stuck here where I'm at right now um, for the whole year. And, you know, winter is pretty rough out here in New York. And I saw my I saw the need to, you know, go and visit family uh, that I haven't seen in a while. And um, yeah, and, and I was able to score, you know, again, just paying for the, the taxes and fees, a super cheap price for uh, plane tickets for not only myself and my brother, but also for my parents, which was great. And um, I encourage other people to actually find a strategy that works for you and fits your financial needs or financial situation. And uh, definitely take the time to, to do your due diligence and study up on how you can get this accomplished. And uh, for well, when the world actually reopens, you know, you're able to to travel wherever you wanted to go before this whole pandemic started and, you know, do it on on a sort of a budget almost where you're not dishing out the money outright and you're able to 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 have an experience, you know, on traveling. I mean, and you might have, you know, that in your mind, you know, you, you're probably not uh, like me and you might say, well, I don't want to go to Japan or Mexico. I might just want to go to another state in, in the United States, you know, or if you're in Europe, you want to go to to a different country, maybe not necessarily the United States or, you know, maybe you're down in Australia and you might want to go, you know, somewhere in South America or South Africa or India or, you know, the really the traveling is is great in that sense where you don't necessarily have to go where everyone else is going you can pick and choose but um a strategy i think and i encourage everyone to do so to think of one figure out how you can do it in, in my case i really enjoy using the credit card point system where i know i have to pay for my bills and if i'm able to maximize every point for for per dollar um, I can accomplish what I want to accomplish and, you know, basically transfer those points to miles or whatever the case is and pay for my tickets by paying for the stuff I already pay for, whether it be gas, whether it be rent, whether it be my cell phone bill, whether it be groceries, it, you know, things that you already know that you have to buy and pay for instead of using uh, your debit card or cash. You know, why not to a certain degree, you know, or to in a certain sense, have that money work for you where you're gaining something for spending it if you're already spending it. I don't know if I'm making sense, but um, definitely uh, I would encourage you to. Yes, you are. Yeah. Say, take a look at the at, at, at um, you know, the link that I, I'm providing and sharing. And definitely there's other people that that also do this type of um analysis and strategies not only uh sebi but you know there's also people like um brian kelly if i'm not mistaken who is uh the the, the owner and or the the main guy over at the points guy um also people that run the the, the website um <laughs> i forgot the name of the website uh but uh, Scott's cheap flights. There you go. Scott's cheap flights. That's another um, a great uh, source of information where you you can actually find uh, very affordable flights, and you can definitely sign up for notifications where that person or Scott's cheap flights can can definitely provide you with insight on cheap flights to destinations that you really want to go. So again, I mean, don't personally don't limit yourself. This is what I want to share with you guys. Don't limit yourself by, you know, saying, well, I can't afford it. I don't know when traveling will be, you know, permissible or available to me. Uh, definitely take the opportunity to, to, to make that strategy right now. So in the future, 
you're able to benefit and reap the the benefits of that strategy that you that you planned out for yourself and the person that you want to go with whether it be family a friend uh your boyfriend your girlfriend your wife your husband so yeah it's something i definitely encourage people to do so um that that's basically my 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 segment uh in a nutshell i don't know what do you guys think real quick jacob do you have any thoughts about it i'm gonna sit this one out for now oh <clears throat> so i guess it's my turn hello yes sir all right so what was it it was It was, it was, it was tra- travel through credit card, right? Yeah, travel with uh, with points, with credit card points, basically. No, it's it's. I think it was a good idea, but you know, just always be careful what you guys do with or how you do it. Yes. Um, I would say that's for me because you know, credit card debt is a real thing as well. Um, so. So yeah, so just be careful in how it's done. Um, obviously, this is not something that can be done in a day. This has to be something that's that's being done over time. So, so you know, it's up to uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the person uh, that wants to travel. So yeah. Okay, I got, I got, I got, I got words to say. So uh, yes, so speak. Um, so ba- uh, what I understood is that you had a goal, and you you I remember even for the one that you wanted to go to Japan, you spoke it for at least two years. We were talking about it late 2017, early 2018, and we're like, this is our goal. You had a game plan. You ha- uh, and you were saying I've been using credit card credit cards, and I've been saving all those points. You did your homework, you did your research, and you 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 stay you stuck with it. You endured, you did your paid your bills, you 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 invested. Basically you did an investment towards your vacation. And I I admire that you it's an, an objective that you completed. Not once, but twice. And I like that. So yeah, definitely Marcos. I mean, uh just just for a little bit of background and reference, um and context basically. So uh and and towards to to uh Hosway's point definitely being careful with credit card debt yeah it's a real thing and it could happen to anyone um when you're not disciplined enough with your spending habits now again i'm no financial advisor of any sort this is simply and strictly you know entertainment purposes only you know do your own research before you you know get yourself into crazy amounts of debt um and that's something I, I hope no one has to go through. But again, um, it, it, it's not as hard as it seems on paper. Strategically speaking, it's very simple. You know, you have to pay for the things that you need to buy or uh, or pay in this in this case. For me, I'll just be really brief about it. I know I have to pay my cell phone bill. I know I have to pay rent. I know I have to pay for gasoline for the car. I know I have to pay these things. Instead of using my debit card, I pay with my credit card. I have the actual money or the funds to actually uh, pay back the card at the end of the week in order for myself not to get stuck in credit card debt. So the beauty about or, or about this yeah, is that you can use that to your advantage and basically transfer those points from your credit card to the airline of your choice depending on what uh strategy or or system you're you're working um over here in the states you can definitely do like a visa with chase or something of that nature or if you go with amex you know american express they have their partners and uh you you see what works for you and um definitely you know use that to your advantage work the system uh you know, a lot of people tend to call it credit card churning and, uh, you know, you work the system to your advantage. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's, you're just using that to your advantage. You, you're being strategic about it. Now, 
as far as me going to in this case as an example i wanted to go to to tokyo japan uh, i had enough points in the first year of me applying for the credit card because of the the bonus that they give you your your sign up bonus that nice, they give Chico. you i noticed your back <laughs> so yeah basically um at, with that sign up bonus i had pretty much enough points to to travel to and back from new york to tokyo but um because of the time constraints where i was at work and i wasn't able to 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 figure out a uh, a date or schedule a date where my brother and i could actually go together uh we held off on it until you know we were able to go together um as a you know a brother trip you know me and my brother went over uh, but yeah, we already had enough points to get us there. It was just a matter of when we wanted to go or if we could schedule it in in our agendas. We finally were able to do that in, on April uh, of 2019. So that's when we figured we could go and we had more than enough points, thank God, to do that, you know, that trip. And um, and we had enough to, to also provide or pay for our actual hotel stay. Because you can also use the credit card points not only for your flights but also your 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 hotel stay. So um, it it really worked out to it, to our advantage holding off because we had to figure out the dates on when we were we were both available and free to go. Um, so that that's just something you know at reference wise that or context wise to help people um, understand that it it's not difficult it's it's pretty pretty easy but um but the discipline has to go along with that so you don't get stuck in credit card debt so the, i do understand that that aspect of it that is pretty tricky but i mean if you know yourself not to be that disciplined and you think you're you have to reach a certain threshold in order for you to get a certain amount of points then i would say maybe uh, hold off on you signing up for credit cards and putting yourself into debt. Um, maybe there's another way of you doing it. But I mean, if you do have the discipline to, you know, obviously only pay for what you know that you have to uh, buy. Again, examples like groceries, the gasoline for your car, uh, your cell phone bill, uh, your internet cable bill, your, you know, Spotify bill. I mean, if you know you have the enough funds to actually pay for that outright then use that to your advantage and have that as a benefit where you can accumulate points by doing that again not everybody's on the same page uh financially and i understand that and this isn't financial advice i'm just saying take you know take the opportunity to actually look into the strategy maybe you like it maybe you don't maybe you say hey Maybe I want to do this next year, or maybe I, I want to start, you know, or maybe I don't want to start. Again, this is just opinion. This is uh, me just, you know, sharing something that I did that worked out great for me. Not necessarily might work out great for you, but again, it, it's just my, my, my piece of advice. So, yeah. Your wisdom. Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Let's go with that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so I feel like. Each one of us had uh, had you know different pieces of opinion. Now I feel like we can transition to Jacob's conversations. What do you think? Yay! Jacob? Yeah. <laughs> also the silent type, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, I told you, Marcos, you want this feast of justice. I will give it to you. <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. <clears throat> So again, we we would like to thank our special guest Jacob tonight for joining us on Life Tech and Sundry. Uh, Jacob, please, please introduce yourself. Who are you? What do you do? How's life treating you? And uh, we'll go from there. Well, hello everyone. I'm Jacob. I work at Amazon right now. I used to be a prison guard. I have a YouTube channel, youtubecom monologue you can find me there well i've been i've been pretty secluded lately really the only person i've been talking to is my roommate 
that's part of the reason I've decided to come on here, I guess. Gotta uh, start somewhere. It's, it's been pretty good. Besides the fact that there's not a lot to do right now. <laughs> that's yeah, true. That's I, I know, true. I know how it feels. Yeah. So, Jacob, uh, we're us three have a couple of questions for you. If you'd like to, and uh, you know, entertain our ideas really quick. Um, we're going to go uh, first Marcos, then, then Josue, then myself. Um, and please, please let us know uh, your thoughts. And obviously, if you can answer the questions, that would be awesome sauce. Uh, Marcos, please. Okay. <clears throat> Jacob, do you solemnly swear to answer to the fullest of your knowledge? <laughs> well, we're not swearing him in. Oh, wait, what? No? Oh, <laughs> no. I was ready to grab my mormon bible yes there hand. you go <laughs> yes <laughs> because i would hear that the whole time over here at the uh, i work at a, at a store at the courthouse and i would hear that every time when they're being sworn in i'm like oh i like <laughs> like oh i wanted to do it once and when you said a police guard i was like i mean um prison guard i'm ready i'm ready this is my moment <laughs> shoot your shot chance. bro you want to know like chance but yeah, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, it all started, you know, with the Reddit post, you and I, Jacob, and you reached out and you said it, it, it we, you know, it was, oh, were you worried about how it was going to be a 50-50, you know, the Reddit thread 50-50 or were you just, let's see how this goes. What was, what were your thoughts? Salutations, Marcos here. This is a message to all the listeners out there. There are links in the show notes for our Twitter, email, and even show notes. Any questions or ideas for the podcast can be sent via these links. Now, back to our regularly scheduled podcast. I was just going to see how it goes. I mean, I'm, there's not a lot I could worry about. I'm not too easily offended. So that the worst the worst that could happen is I end up on a terrible show, which didn't happen. I've enjoyed my time yeah. over here. Yeah, thankfully, right? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. I appreciate that, man. That's my question. I, I, I almost swore him in, so I'm good. Yeah, we can't we can't do that legally, Marcos. You know that. It's not illegal. It is. <laughs> okay. I feel like I'm question. legally obligated now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. We can't do that until you sign a contract, Dan. Can't do that either. <laughs> Would you guys oh. buy my soul? If I wanted no, no, to no, sell no, my no. soul. <laughs> <you> guys... <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. <clears throat> you don't want a soul? <laughs> no, we don't, no, we don't do that mine. business. Thank you. <laughs> it's like I have mine thank but you but think of what you could do with two <laughs> he's like you can you can double your your rations your soul your, your soul ownage it's like mmm yummy I'll sell what? my soul to anyone listening for a tenth of a bitcoin oh a tenth of bitcoin good lord don't get oh. me started on that oh, man. Yeah. oh my god <laughs> or for oh, some horse oh no is the GameStop what? thing still going no Big it's done <laughs> It's like Bitcoin to the moon. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. It's either that or Doge, Dogecoin, you know, one of the two. Now, yeah. <laughs> and that, that was my question. Yes. All right, so um, I guess, Josue, you wanna you wanna go ahead and ask this, uh, the second question? No, yeah. Uh, I guess for me, for me personally, is uh, what's your credit card? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like, what's let me go buy my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, bah, bah, bah. no, no, but yeah, <laughs> but no, yeah, it's, it's mostly pertained to our last segment, which is usually anime. Is uh, have you heard of anime? And if, if you have, uh, can you list like two since it's just one question? I have not watched a lot of anime, I've heard of it, of course. I the only one I've watched all the way through was the original Dragon Ball. Respect, sir. Tip of the hat. Yeah, and not a lot of people I've do that. I've seen Dragon That's Ball and Dragon Ball Z. 
And I've wa- I watched them both subbed. I like the sub. Oh, what? Oh, oh. <laughs> see? Oh. <laughs> what? what? Throw out your trash dumb. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was you, Jose, who preached it. Damn. Damn. And you're under oath. <laughs> Damn. Under oath. So well, there you go. <laughs> Oh, oh man. About the flamethrower <laughs> for the dubbings. No, that that's a good question. That's a good question. Uh, kudos to you, Mister Mister Hostway, Mister J, for for asking that. So, um, my my question for Jacob would be, uh, as far as Amazon is concerned, what do you hold a, a you know a seat of power next to Mister Bezos or or no? No, I'm just a low underling. I am. Nothing but a mermite in the Amazon world. Oh, come on, Jacob. Nah, <laughs> it can't be true. I've only been there like four months. I just started there recently. Oh, and, oh, and wow. has the news of Mr. Wow. Bezos stepping down uh, affected anybody or, or you in, in, in your job as CEO? No, I, I as CEO. Have a- <laughs> As CEO of Amazon, Jeff Bezos hand selected me. Actually, there you go. There you go. CEO. That's what I like to hear. You walk <laughs> into the now. dark room with a light on the chair, and he's like, "Answer these I'm questions." Prob- <laughs> I'm probably <laughs> driving stock prices down <laughs> right now. Every word oh, I speak. Come on. So <laughs> <laughs> shut up. <laughs> imagine, imagine you walk into your interview. You're wearing your bulletproof vest from prison. So I see you came um, um, strapped. Good. <laughs> but that, that's a, that's also a very interesting thing to to ask right now. Do they pay you in stock options, or do they pay you like in, in Dogecoin or <laughs> uh, Ethereum <laughs> yeah. or Bitcoin? If they started offering to pay me in crypto, I would definitely. Pick Dogecoin. <laughs> no, I wish there was an option to get paid in Bitcoin. I can't get stock up. Well, I pro- you know, I've been in cryptocurrency for a while. And you know what always happens to me is I always end up gambling all my crypto away. No way. No. I'm like, I've been in crypto since like, 2016 2017 and i've had i've probably had like two or three full bitcoin throughout the years but i've always just fucking gambled it and squandered it no way (laughs) yeah Uh, so i would you ever um what's it called would you ever consider like moving out to like miami since uh they're they're actually starting to implement uh, buying and selling with Bitcoin. For, are they really? I didn't know that. So you could just go yeah. to like Seven Eleven there, right? Someone with Bitcoin. They're actually taking. Sorry, I want like uh, everything in this store, man. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're taking like right. uh, I believe a, a chunk or a percent of uh, the city's actual uh, money reserve and converting it to 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 Bitcoin. High so, risk, man. That's high risk. Yeah, high risk, but high reward if it does work out. It is. It's crazy how high Bitcoin's going lately. Imagine you go I into the store. It. I'd like your entire store, man, with one coin. <laughs> <laughs> and, like and then a second later, <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm giving it back because I, I can't afford it anymore. That's just how volatile it is sometimes. That's true. I don't think it's going to hold the volume it holds for a long time. Is, yeah. just me, is there an issue I, within the the, the 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 blockchain or is the an issue of there being too much or spe- because of there's too little of these coins? My issue with it is the transaction fees. It's like you got to pay $10, $20 every transaction you make. It, it makes it viable for like a big purchase, I suppose. But Not I for like hundreds of a coin. It. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I didn't know that you had to pay some sort of like fee in order for you to properly use it or make a purchase. That's crazy. Yeah, it's usually like $10 with Bitcoin when I was trading a lot. But the really bad one is Ethereum. Sometimes the gas fee to send Ethereum, it could be outrageous sometimes. Oh, that's wild. Damn. I did not. So just 
I, I and I know I'm probably answering asking the most questions right now, uh, Jacob. And I apologize, Marcos and Josue. But um, I, it, this, is just, <laughs> this is just crazy because I wanted to ask Jacob real quick. So, um, do you prefer Gemini or do you prefer Coinbase to to buy your your coins? I thought you were going to talk about Zodiac signs. I was like, oh, that's <laughs> what I thought at first too. I was like, I know nothing about this, but I do know about this. So I usually use Coinbase, honestly. If you go, there's like the Coinbase Pro. If you use that one, it has basically no buying fees. Okay. So if you're going to okay. use Coinbase, you got to use like the Pro version. And it's literally just changing the URL. I don't know why they have it huh. set up like that. It's really odd. But if you go to like Coinbase Pro over the real Coinbase, not the real right. Coinbase, but the regular default <laughs> Coinbase. Okay. For some reason, it has no fees. Huh. Real coin, please stand up. All right. <laughs> so, so, so Jacob, uh, my, I guess one of my other questions would also be like, how, since you have been using, um, you know, Bitcoin, how safe is it? Like, how secure is it? Do you keep it on like a, a ledger or do you keep in it, your hard you know, drive under the couch? <laughs> like, obviously, <laughs> it, like cold, um, you know, off the off the actual um, some sort of either brokerage or do you keep it in in a brokerage where you get some sort of um, some sort of interest in in your coin or, or should we you, cut this out so nobody should know? <laughs> I mean, he's not going to share. He's not going to share his, uh, his secrets. Or <laughs> once, once, it, once he starts, I just hear beep, and that's how I do money. Oh, <laughs> like I, like I said, I have nothing right now. I've gambled it all. <laughs> no way. <laughs> it's so easy to gamble with Bitcoin. I don't know if you know about that, but no, I don't. This is the first I'm all. hearing about this. It's an entire <laughs> casino for Bitcoins, apparently. Right? Is that yeah. right? Is that like there's like Bitcoin? Like, casinos you could just buy bitcoin go online go to a casino and you don't even have to like i feel like i've never used other casino services but i feel like if you're using a bank or something you probably have to put in all your information and stuff but if you use bitcoin you just send them your bitcoin and you could play blackjack with it and it's absolutely terrible for a degenerate gambler like myself <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh man oh man but i mean you i'm pretty sure you won you know a couple of hands uh see i always win and then i get excited about how much i win and chase my wins and then oh, no. <laughs> wow that's absolutely man. crazy man so uh, here's my over the years, i'm sure i've had Bitcoin. Two whole bitcoins that I've just no. wasted. <laughs> oh yeah. my god! So, because so when be... I started, it was they were like worth not. It was like a thousand dollars a bitcoin. Oh my god! So goodness. wasting a bitcoin wasn't as big of a deal as now that it's at like fifty-seven thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, you it's spent crazy. over hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> you could have bought a house, a I car, a, a nice house. fancy car in Texas. A Tesla. I could be driving a Tesla right now. He could be with Elon Musk at this point. The Musky boy. Oh man, yeah, you could have definitely been, you know, sh- racing off in the sunset with your <laughs> Tesla right now, dude. <laughs> and then I, I don't know if you all know about, like they call them shit coins. Have you what? ever heard of this? No. no. <laughs> this is news to me. You we- don't know about shit coins. No. So basically, like ERC20 tokens, anything, you can make your own token made under the Ethereum umbrella and anybody could trade Ethereum for it, basically. So there's, you would go on Uniswap and you could trade your Ethereum for a shit coin. And it's <laughs> the memes are real. The oh, memes man. are real. That's so crazy. That's right. The memes are real. Anybody can make their own meme token. So people will make like Elon Musk token. <laughs> and there's oh, a potential for it to hell. actually take off and become like not a big token, but it could gain value. It could like a hundred. 
times than price. Your average shit coin. No lie, but we should definitely make a thing about shit coins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can make your own shit coin pretty easy, but the thing about them definitely well, make our own <laughs> love. Like anime <laughs> coin, like power uh, something. Ooh. What happened? The Ooh. most recent <laughs> one I got into was called McDonald's coin. <laughs> no. Awesome sauce. Yeah, you could look it up right wow. if you wanted to. Look up MCDC coin and you'll find McDonald's. <laughs> MCDC. MCDC. Oh, I will definitely do and that. A, and it is a shit coin. MCDC I coin. lost a good amount of money on. <laughs> oh, no. oh, wow. Yeah, you're right. I, I, I definitely peeped it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. That's so crazy. Okay. I wish you can actually buy like McDonald's with this, right? Like, <laughs> do all these uh all these uh, <laughs> cryptocurrencies use that theory of blockchain, or do they have another other features besides blockchain technology? Um, they all use it differently, and it, I think it's easiest to make one. I don't know a lot about this, but I think it's easiest to make one on the. ERC20, which is like Ethereum's base. Like, I don't know if they have an open source where it's really easy to make it or what, but a lot of people make their own ERC20 tokens, which is um, under the Ethereum base. Yeah. Okay. Low key, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know if you've heard in the news that like China is trying to push him itself also to get some cryptocurrency, its own in, in country coin, uh, crypto coin. And to use it as a main way of transaction within within the, its citizens and all those things. Do you think they used Ethereum to create their to create their own coin? <laughs> I bet it's a high possibility, honestly. Okay. So let me ask some more a more personal question. Uh -oh. Have you have you lived in Colorado all of your life, or is this like you've been there for a few few years, months, days? hours uh, born and raised <laughs> colorado native boulder 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 and boy, i've only have... been in boulder for four months though okay so you were you were right you were from another town or city or part of colorado yeah i grew up in a small town up by nebraska actually but in colorado but like right on the border of nebraska and colorado Okay, have you have you traveled to any other states? I have a little bit. I've been to Las Vegas and Salt Lake City. Oh, and that's where I went. To. <laughs> and I've been uh, all over Nebraska and Wyoming. Okay. But that's about it, honestly. I haven't traveled enough in my life yet. Okay, okay. So yeah, so mostly like West Coast or like Midwest almost. Yeah. Right, right. I just, just want to get a sense, cause I find it weird that he didn't he didn't swear you in though. <laughs> well, why do you need to swear him in? I'm I'm not trying to hold him hold him up to like the court of law here. I like, just lied about everything I said because <laughs> I was <wasn't> sworn in. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, have you sure is this true, or have you? It's like, no, I'm in I'm in Canada right now. Yeah, oh, I'm actually yeah. in a bunker in Nova Scotia. Basically. Oh, nice. yes. nah, he, he's, he's, he's under those layers of ice that he dug out. But he just didn't make it to his lair yet. He just hear a weird banging on his roof. He's like, oh, what's going on up there? Silence, fishy. Silence. But now, yeah, um, another question would be like, I know I mentioned anime, but... Are you into to like more of like a like any comics around here like Marvel DC or or maybe are you like a gamer by chance like you know by night you're you're with Amazon but by day you might be I play a lot of Fallout. I've been replaying Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas lately. 
Oh, so you are in a bunk- bunker in those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have a mod that... I, have you played either of the games? No, but I've heard of them. I have no. heard of them as well, yeah. Oh, you gotta try them out. They're great games. But I have a mod that puts Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas together. It's really cool. Those are like, besides yeah. Skyrim, those are like some of the most modded ones, right? And Rust, of course. Yeah. So, so Jacob, are you Master Race then? Or do you uh, yeah, play console? I am PC Master Race. Nice. Tip of the hat. All right. So, so how wait, you, did so... you... Did you construct yeah, did you your build own it? PC? Yeah, did you build it or? I had a friend build it for me, actually. Okay, how old I is your I do not know what I'm doing enough to... It's a couple years old now. I, I've been wanting to upgrade. I'll probably build my next one. I have no clue what I'm doing, but I'll try it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm gonna sound. I'm, I'm gonna sound the lead because oh, I am. Not, I mean, don't even sweat. I, see I don't know right a thing about that either. Mm. We're all silent. Yo, but also, Dude, Jacob, are you are you willing to like at some point also buy oh, the components there you go, there you go. To, I'm back. to build your own your your mining uh rig for for Bitcoin? Do they still do that? No, I don't know if that's profitable anymore. Even like the people that are making money off of it have like big, like GPU farms that have <laughs> so much processing power. It's too hard to compete with. I understand. I think Dang. Uh, that's something that I would have loved to do. Like when, when you know, when it uh, when Bitcoin just started to like be announced in the interwebs. That would have been great. See, I I tried to a little bit around like when I got into crypto, like 2016 or 17. And I didn't make anything crazy off of it even then. But if you got in on the ground floor, like right when it launched. Was it 2012, 2014? Yeah. 15, I think it was. Around then. If you got in then, though... That would have been so profitable. Dang. Nah, Even yeah, just a regular no computer would have made you Money. thousands. Coins. Jeez. You've been mining coins. You've been going. You'd be cosplaying as Mario. What? Wait, wait oh, hold up. <laughs> yes. So, so another. I guess this, this will tickle more to Marco's fancy. But yes, are you into to like myths, legends, maybe like folklores by chance? Um. Yeah, that's it. You know, I actually am. I like I like Hindu culture a lot. I like all the different deities and Hinduism. Okay, Interesting. Okay. 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 Is there one in particular that that you know really really le- that you really enjoy to to hear about or read about? Or remember yeah, there's, there's <laughs> Kali. It's the wife of Shiva, the like Thing with a bunch of arms coming out of it right right <laughs> you know that one the blue lady yes definitely yeah well that's his it's his wife and she basically kicks his ass <laughs> <and> dominates <laughs> him and she's like the destroyer she like destroys everything checks out checks out <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's crazy but if you look someday. up like a picture of Kali it's just her standing over Shiva, like ready to kill him. <laughs> like, where's the milk? You said you were going for milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's crazy funny. So then, are you only into uh, uh, Hindu myths, or is it? Are you open to anything? I'm open to any kind of myths. Remember, I you are. This, this one, I have to say, you're under about oath. Hindu. Yes, <laughs> but I'm open to any of them. Okay, Marcus, <laughs> that's on you. Have you heard about the journey to the West? Oh, come on. No, 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 no. Don't start with that one. <laughs> Reel him back, Mr. J. <laughs> no, hold I, me I was, back. Hold I was me thinking, back. I was thinking more, more about the prison guard stuff. Okay, yeah. Let's, um, so now my other question. Did you have to go strapped, literally, when you went to the prison guard job? You know, I wasn't very strapped. All I will get. 
every day you would check out your own OC they call it it's like pepper spray and that's You're really like, all here, I good luck. carry <laughs> yeah I didn't oh, get man. to carry a gun or anything I just pepper spray no a baton, baton nothing Aww. no baton no, all no, I had no, is pepper spray, spray here. Did the, a radio the baton light up? and handcuffs wow that's so this wasn't a, a like a high profile type of like prison it, it was more of like a state or a local type of uh prison it was a state prison yeah okay Damn. okay so so no big wigs you're not gonna get you know el chapo going to to the place you were working at right no el chapo there were like murderers and stuff but no El Chapo. Golly. I feel like Pepper Stray will slow them down, though. No matter how big you are. It may have slow them down, it but... I know how to that. use it. Okay, good, good. Oh, good. I mean, like, I mean, we have you here to, that, t- to tell the tale. All right, either okay, that or you so. add it to your food for a little seasoning, you know? I might get spicy. <laughs> okay, but yeah, man, now you can start with Journey to the West. <laughs> Uh, I mean, because you saw Dragon Ball, and I thought about. I don't know how everything eventually ends up with Journey to the West. That's it's only in your world, Marcos. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's an anime. It's in. It's a it, movie. It's a movie. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, and you said Hindu culture. It's the original story of Journey to the West. But yeah. I know uh, I'm completely ignorant to Journey to the West. Actually, we, we're going to have to fact check that last one. Marcos went off in tangent again. <laughs> we're going to have to say no but to I, the last one. Okay, he's my fact checker. Because that's uh, not true. But wasn't it inspired originally to the, due to the Monkey King? Other the way around. From the Hindu culture? Uh, the other way around. Oh. Actually, actually, no. We don't know. They're just very similar, but it might be other way around. So there's I don't remember. Uh, Oh, what's the Hanuman? Is it inspired by Hanuman? The guy that built the, the bridge. The monkey god? Yes. It's one it's it's just but that's just a chunk of it. Not even a but it's like one of the characters. There's many characters in Journey to the West. So from what I know, Hanuman the monkey god, he basically I he wanted to like reach the sun, I think. And oh, he, he tried. No, 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 no. Oh, so, so, uh, oh, like? <laughs> so, so, uh, just, just to give to you, uh, just to give the, pre- I have told this in the podcast, Marcos can cut this, but the, the character Marcos is thinking about is Sun Wukong. Um, he is the great and handsome monkey king. Um, but his, his, his mission in life was to have as much fun and no rules against him. Um, but he got the hands. <laughs> oh, you know, I played League of Legends a little bit, and I play as Wukong. I guess that's yeah, I think that's actually him. But that. he got it's... this right. Yes, <laughs> basically. <laughs> yes. No, he did. He did actually. He, he literally got the hands. Hand, not hands. <laughs> and then the mountain. <laughs> no, no, no. The mountain was the hands. <laughs> oh, it was literally called Five Finger Mountain. Oh yeah. Oh the, wow. The original Chinese one. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, remember he was like, jump over my hand. He's like, oh, this mountain. No, that's my hand. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think uh, one of our previous guys did mention that, that uh, he was very similar to, I think he said Hanuman. I forgot. Yeah, I forgot. Hanuman the monkey god. He had to rescue yeah. someone and, you know, he built a bridge. But I think I think we did come to the conclusion that Song Wukong was more mischievous. Um... Because he, he was, was chaotic, 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 just pure chaotic. <laughs> because no, he was con- like he wasn't the... chaotic. He was a genius. Chaotic, no, 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 he was a genius. Like the god of devotion, so it would make sense if he was a little more mischievous. Hmm. So I, I know this sound. Guy. This is going to be a little bit off topic, guys. But just real quick, Jacob, are you team Samsung or are you team Apple? I'm a Samsung man. Hey. Hey. That's right. Hi. Everyone That's here's right. a Samsung Jacob. Oh, I'm in good company. Hey. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. 
and Probably. right there we lost half of our subs. No? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> out of our three like subs, I was listening to you guys on Apple Podcasts. Now I'm not. <laughs> out of our and, like four subs, two are left. <laughs> it's like, there goes our five star up, review. Your upcoming Apple sponsorship is out the window. <laughs> oh yeah, just just uh, just a little bit out of context here, but I think I don't know. We mentioned this, but we got three five star reviews now on Apple Podcasts. Cool. Huh? Oh! Huh? Oh I no! Gotta check though, cause for celebration, <laughs> I gotta check. I gotta think if that's still true. Uh, let's see. Oh wait, no, never mind. It's just the one now. I guess they took it down. <laughs> Damn it! But yeah. All right. So, also an- another quick question before we move on to like the last three three uh, uh, points, and then we move on to the last segment. Um, for you, to, unless Marcos and Josue, you have another question. I I, I wanted to a- ask uh, Jacob one more. Um, as far as um, what what is an indulgence of yours? Like, it, do you have something that you like enjoy either eating or drinking or doing? Like chocolate that, cake, right? Or like, uh, it, are you a whiskey man or do you do the cigar every Friday or with the boys or um, I don't know. Is there something that you like that you like to indulge in that um, that you would like to share with us? I do like some gin. I'm not a whiskey guy, but gin. Okay. He's, he's looking, he's stretching out for the bottle as we speak. He's like, hold up, gin. <laughs> Let me grab this big bottle right here. <laughs> so wait, so wait, just a follow-up question. I didn't know my camera was on. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, so, so a follow-up question. Are you, you a cake guy or you a pie guy? Cake. I've never okay, been a big pie fan. So like go. regular cake or cupcake? Ooh. Just cake. Just cake. How about cake. that? Anything cake. with a lot of crust. <clears throat> like there the you go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that I mean, that, for me, those were my questions. Thank you for for answering them, Jacob. Um, Anything so maybe I can make a gin cake. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Sounds they have rum cake. delicious. Yes. They make rum cake. I can make <laughs> gin cake. I feel like your brother, your brother, oh, you got excited. <laughs> it's like, are, are, you, are, you, uh, are you a person that likes to either cook or bake at home? I cook. I don't bake. I've never, I don't think I've ever baked anything. Huh? I bake bacon. <laughs> but not bake. What about chicken? I don't know if that as you know. should, sir. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll bake some chicken, but never cake. any cake or desserts or anything pleasant. Okay, so I'm um, all right. Just I, I know I'm, I'm just rattling on with questions. Um, so uh, fast food of your choice. What's your go-to? Oh. <laughs> That's tough. That's a thinker. I, I <laughs> think I go with McDonald's. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> because of the coin? Because of the coin, yeah. You say I have That's a surplus why I of these McDonald's coins. McDonald's coin. It's my favorite food. I might as well buy a shit coin of it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's that's the now, that's since, the title. Since he is on the West Coast, he might have different fast foods or restaurants from us. In that's Colorado. true. That's yeah. true. True, true, true. Yeah. Like, uh, what? like, do you have uh, like if if McDonald's is your first, what's your top five? Damn, I uh, like Arby's, Wendy's. Do you guys have Five Guys up there? That's one I don't know if it's everywhere. Oh yeah, that's, that's yes, we too. do. Five Guys. Yeah, there's Five Guys in the corner over here. Damn. I think one of those things that we don't really have over here or we don't have at all is in and out. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, we don't have I was thinking also In-N-Out. Jack in the Box. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Jack, Jack in the Box, the you box. can find it down south on the East Coast. I mean, we can say yeah. Bojangles or, or Jack in the oh, Box. Oh, no, but, but isn't Bojangles just the south? Maybe. I, I don't. I've, ne- I've never ate there. I, I've, I've never, never seen, seen it like, outside. Like, I've seen one in Georgia. What about Jolly Bee? I think that's that's like a California type of thing in Hawaii. Is that right? Yeah, I haven't heard yet. No, huh? Huh, you're just saying weird names. After you said Jack and, Bo- and Jack in a Box, <laughs> I'm just you, saying I words. <laughs> you said you said Jin Bojangles. I'm like what? He's like Jin. <laughs> he's on the Jin cake. Right, right. What about um Texas Roadhouse? 
Or is that only exclusively in Texas? Texas? <laughs> <laughs> we have them here. Oh, see? Oh, They're nice. In Colorado. I have, I have, have a, never seen have one here. Do you have a Chick fil A? We have Chick fil A. How about Golden Corral? I think there's one in the Bronx, if I'm not mistaken. I miss the base. <laughs> I have no one. I think there's one over I, here I, I too. I have there from. myself. I think, I think they're more upstate New York than downstate New York. You're right. upstate, right, Hosmer? Yeah, I think I've seen a few over here. Like, I think they kind of did away with the buffets. I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, buffets yeah, I'm so sad anymore. about that. I mean, those were my go to. We have like you, a, a proto Chinese one over here, the something star, five star, or red star, Alan. Oh, uh, what's it called? China Star? Uh, China yeah, Star? I think, I think it was called China Star. No, no, was it? No, Super Buffet, so. wasn't it? Super Buffet, something like that. Yeah, it's gone. Are you now. talking about the, yeah, it's gone? Yeah, it's I gone. I don't even know how buffets make money. Maybe everybody's just not as gluttonous as me. But I go in there and I'll eat like $20 three. worth of food for $3. Three, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Easy, I'd seriously. go for three or four servings. Yeah, I'm I'm guilty of that too. You're, you're in good company with me. How do you know like back in like two, three minutes? Okay. I think yes. Thank I, you. Yes. No, yeah. So since we, since, you know, you're talking to, I believe we call ourselves native New Yorkers, would you ever, would you ever like to come visit New York? I would love to. I actually love New York culture. I've, I've been a big fan of New York comedy for a long time. Oh, I don't know if you so, know. So let me get more Did specific. you guys ever listen to the or heard of the radio show Opie and Anthony they were based in New York I don't think so I don't think I so think Damn, I, I would listen that. to them a lot and they would have New York comics all the time so I feel like I know quite a bit about New York never been oh. being there so, so let me be let me be more specific New York City or like the entire New York State because we will get confused New on York that. City okay yeah, because a lot of people get confused when we talk about New York because they're like, oh, you mean your city? You're like, yeah, no, 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 states like all a bunch of farm farming and stuff. huh? It's completely yeah. different than, for example, oh, Josue, yeah. he's like five hours, four, maybe five or four what? hours. No, you, you got, we got to check your work on that, Marcos. Show me your work. Oh. It's three. Oh, whoops. Yeah, three. And he's like, it's farmland, right, Jose, when you were saying? Uh, not really. Over here, no, but on the way here, yes. Yeah, that's what I meant. <laughs> it's just farmland. And hey, Mar Marcos, Marcos was never a guy of geography. He got lost. I got lost. I mean, for example, for for okay. uh, for, for thought, um, um, Jacob, all, all of us here, uh, I think all of us, I want to say, um, at least once have done a road trip from New York because technically we're also we're all from New York. Wait, hold on, hold on, baby. Finish, finish your sentence. Okay, we've all done a road trip. In our res with our respective families back in the day, from all the way New York all the way down to Mexico. Oh, then no, that, then you're wrong. I you have. Oh wow. How I have long of a drive is that? That's three, three days. days. It's a lot. <laughs> well, but I haven't done it. But my father has done it with with their families. Because I I'm I'm the younger side of the family. So. So yeah, but um. Like what? What? Like and since we're talking about New York City, like where where would you like to visit? But I'd like to see. I don't even know if they still do it there, but the Ed Sullivan Theater where they used to do the letter, the David Letterman show. I'd like to go there. I don't know if they still even use them for anything though. Wait, what was the theater again? The Ed Sullivan Theater. I feel like I've heard of that. I think I might have been in that one. Yeah, for like a class I, trip I bet so I don't know what if they still shoot anything there but they used to do like the David Letterman show there wouldn't they do the um, the um, uh, what's this guy's name oh, damn it he's um, uh, what's uh, I, I, um, he's a comedian but he would be over here in New York and he went to uh, California uh, what's his name um, Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, there you go. The Kimmel, the Jimmy Kimmel show. Oh yeah, Did they shoot that in New York too. They used to. Then they, he switched. He went west. Huh. Traitor. Traitor. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's all U.S. Personally, I'm like, yeah. Um, I'm like you. I mean, I don't know. Um, since 
uh, with what I've seen, like on USA, right? Let's go USA, all of us. So, so back back with the David Letterman show. You mean the late night show? Yeah. As a, yeah. I used to watch, as like really little when I was still on there. But I'd stay up after I was supposed to like do my homework and stuff. Exposed. I had a TV in my room, and I'd always watch late night with David Letterman. When it's I good was thing you oh, so now I know I know where it is now. It's by <laughs> it's in it's by Midtown Marcos by Lincoln Square by Penn Station somewhere around there. Yeah, I know where it is. By yeah. the by the by the Central Park. Like yeah. the southern part of it. You'd think that because of Manhattan, it's not that big. It's just three miles. It really is. It's not that big. You can walk the entire thing. I mean, you go and walk all the What do you think about the avenue. grid? Do you like the grid or do you think it's... It's easy to find yourself. It's like you are so here. Nasty. I've heard no, people like for, criticize yeah, it for tourists, because it like yeah. looks bland. <laughs> it's, it seems style. like it's... Yeah, it seems like it's very easy to navigate at least you, you'll get used to it after getting lost like 15 times yeah like um for example for me uh i, I don't know if i have emphasized this a lot but i feel like i have I merits repetition because it was something that happened to me in the city i had to do my my validation for visual impairment because i'm technically visually impaired um i was but from, technically no i am but there i was go. i was I was told, okay, from where you are right now, get on the train, get to Chinatown, and I'll see oh, you in this address. Good luck. Wait, bye. Wait, wait. Which Chinatown? Manhattan? Or yeah, downtown wait. Manhattan. Oh, that one. He's like, I'll see you there. Bye. I'm like, okay. Good yeah, good luck. And I <laughs> bought my ticket. I went there and like, okay, you gotta be, you gotta go to like a uh, 32nd Street. Okay. Where am I? 40 sec, 43rd. Okay. Um, you can take either the this other train. Or this other one and because i was using the cane a lot of people were very helpful i'm not gonna deny that like when um i, I personally have my own grudge against the cane but i've i found it to be very beneficial for me in that sense because so, he, he's done the pervy old man trick yeah yeah right <laughs> i'm under oath i'm under oath I remember he's like i can't see where am i go oh nah it's like I came back and all I hear is pervy old man. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like um, I, I I made it somehow. I made it over there, but I don't want to say thanks to the grid, but it it's the uh, it's the grid played a lot with the whole thing. Oh, doesn't finding it start yourself. to get a little sketchy once you get past like Hundred Street? Like, how far up are you willing to go? I went up to Hundred Twenty Fifth <laughs> and didn't want to go higher. <laughs> yeah, oh, wait, 125th. That's that's a known. That's a pretty big area. I used to go to a school at like Queens, wait, and wait, I was isn't taking... Harlem. Yeah, that's Harlem. Yeah, that's Harlem. <laughs> <laughs> I used to go to high school for my high school class. I used to go to the uh, a theater over there for a, a senior project at 105th, literally the beginning of Harlem. Like, oh, okay, no. yeah, yeah. I, I would go over there after class, and then go home, come over here, uh, take the bu- the last bus to to. Um, where we live and uh, I would get here like at 9 or 9 p.m. in October I was like I feel oddly safer over here by the <laughs> by the um, Apple Farm oh sorry where's it um, Central Avenue I yeah. would be dropped off and say wait, wait, no if you're to Apple Farm that's this Terrytown Road yeah but in the intersection between Grand Central um, oh, Central, it's, Central it's, Avenue yeah, Central Avenue yeah and I was like it's 9 o'clock I feel oddly safer here and I just walk home from all the way over there. I would walk from that bus stop all the way home. No problem. You would walk from 125th Street? No, 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 no. From oh, once I once okay. I got out of the city. Once you got out. Once I got out of the city. And don't get me wrong. There's some holes in the wall <laughs> in the city, which they're just gems. I found a little Mexican place while working with the theater. I'm like, I'm at home. I'm at home in this it's Mexican like place. Best. Yes, I did say I saw that. I saw like, and I I went in Spanish. Yo, do you have this, this, and this? And like, yeah, I got you. I'm like, yes. So this is how it feels to be um to be in your home turf. Basically. Yeah, from what I've heard, like past a hundred hundred street, like it just gets a little sketchier every mm-hmm. bit you go up from there. Is that at the end of, of 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 uh, 
what's uh, Central Park, basically the northern end of Central Park, Marvis, Marcus Garden, I feel a little bit sketchy. Okay. And I had to do what um, when I was in high school, I had to do some community stuff for the the museum. It was a museum slash theater. So I had to walk literally like six blocks or seven blocks all in Harlem. Like, eh. I, mean, yeah, I, I always feel like the most sketchy places in New York City is always like the tourist places like Times Square, Central Park. That's a fact. Because ma- <laughs> especially Times Square, Times Square would be packed. I'm like, nah, too right, many bodies right. around there. The even, people even camouflage COVID, themselves. Even before COVID, because it'd be packed in there. I'm like, what is this? There's got to be it's- at least a dozen crazy people mixed in there somewhere. Yeah, like legitimately terrifyingly like crazy. <laughs> Everyone's a crazy now. It's a minimum. I, I'm talking like real crazy. <laughs> uh, there's some there's some hidden gems though of situations that you find in there though. I, I definitely gotta say that I definitely feel safer like outside of those those areas. Like even in Harlem, I feel okay. Yeah. So I mean that's just me. Um Where's Flatbush at? Flatbush is in Queens and yeah. by Jamaica, Queens. Okay. You do not want to hang out by there, though. I used no, to. No, Jamaica, Jamaica is pretty good. No, Flatbush, though. Oh. Um, I, no I I had to take the, again when I used to go to college. I would take get off at 125th, <laughs> take the 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 bus to Queens, then have to take a transfer in Flatbush, and this would be like an hour, an hour and a half in transit, and then uh, go to school. And uh, there was. Uh, a, a, a mall there but you didn't feel comfortable unless you were a local and uh, a years being a local you'd feel comfortable you see Marcos in his in his time being legally blind has only broken one cane and that's what's in fact <laughs> nah <laughs> nah 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 I still have the same cane but yeah no there, there's a whole story with me and my cane I mean that's probably later in, la- in, in other episodes have you tripped with that? no I've oh. tripped less with the cane than without the cane. Oh, that should make sense. That makes sense. That checks out. <laughs> yeah, that should check out. But yeah. I can imagine like you just like if you're if you know the rubber ball part of it, like if it gets stuck in a hole, you're like, oh. Hey, I have. I've been stabbed a bunch of times in the in the chest, and I got. I need to. I need to be wearing my vest, and I want to move with the cane. <laughs> That thing is hurt. That thing hurts your ribs. Uh, yeah, because I mean, it's mostly because of the way Marcus holds it. I mean, he's yes. supposed to hold it like that, so he can't. He can't. He can't. He can't do anything about being penetrated like that. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> but yeah, you're not wrong. Oh yeah, but I've seen that the worst before. when you're getting penetrated and feel <laughs> hopeless about it. No, oh, yeah. I like his. I like his cane because it, it folds up and everything. It's a retractable cane. I have it here next to me. He's like, watch out. Like I said, he's only broken one of those canes. Nah, they're they're carbon fiber and they're pretty resilient. They haven't worn out the ball yet. And I've have it, had it since 2018. I, I once I passed the test, I didn't feel com- I didn't feel personally comfortable using it because like I can still see. Let me go do my own thing. And then I had my eye surgery in 2019. I'm like okay, I'll use it, and oh, I feel yeah. like I got literally addicted to it. Like I, I, I feel, I feel weird, like an, an addict. I feel like I'm, I dare I say, it's scared when I'm not with a cane and I'm alone in the street. I'm like, I have the jitters, like, Ugh. but that's just me. So yeah. So should we continue on to our next segment? Yeah. Are you guys comfortable continuing with the next part? Yes, sir. Let's go. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go in with part two, with episode uh, episode two. Okay, uh, 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 uh. found it. Uh, <clears throat> Google Maps user Google Maps users can now pay for parking or their transit for for right from oh fair right from the app. Google Maps being um being clutch and finally though, open quote. <clears throat> Drivers throughout the United States will now have the opportunity, oh, have the option to pay for street pay parking right from Google Maps as part of an expanded part, uh, partnership with trans, transportation software companies 
Passport, and Park Mobile. Google also announced it was extending this、uh, contactless payment feature to public transit users. Google Maps Pay for Parking features will expand first via Android, yes, to Uh, more than 40, for, more than 400 US cities, including Boston, Chicago, Houston, LA, or Los Angeles, New York, and Washington, to mention a few. The feature will be available throughout the iOS version of Google Maps app soon, to,、uh, the company said. The transit feature will include more than 80 transit agencies globally. The parking feature, which in,、uh, integrates with Passport's、uh, operating system, launched in Austin last year. The two companies in- indicated at the time that the feature would even Even eventually roll out in other US cities. While the expansion was expected, it's still a, a boon for the, North,、uh, for the North Carolina based startup, which is now integrated into one of the most widely used navigation apps. The same goes for Park Mobile, which is also embedded into Google Maps. The aim, according to Google Maps、uh, product manager Vishal Duda and, and Google Pay's、uh, Fasta Aruj, Aru, Aruju, Aruju, is to help drivers, drivers, users to pay parking without having to touch a meter. A compelling feature in the era of COVID 19. Read more at www.techcrunch.com. Slash 2021, slash 2, slash 17. Yes. Thoughts? Yes. Who wants to go first? My thought would be who is going to pay for parking in New York City? People do. There's people. There's a market. Yeah, but like, 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 let's break it down to the borough. Right? There's five boroughs. Number one, Manhattan. No, that's, I don't think that's going to be useful in Manhattan. That's number one. Okay.、Um, Queens, Brooklyn, and Bronx. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe more for Queens. Yes.、Um, uh, in Staten Island, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't really been there in a while. Uh, so, 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 yeah, it's like, it, so for like a city, a city like that, like New York City, I feel like it's kind of ineffective. Um, now, as far as the other one goes, like Boston, Chicago, Houston, and Los Angeles, um, if, if it doesn't have a similar situation like New York City, then yeah. What do you mean think, by a similar situation? Well, I mean, like, look, look New York City, like, New York City. Like, let's be honest, <laughs> it's built for, it's not built for, for having a large amount of, of traffic.、Um, you can even see it to yourself. You, you've seen it, Marcos. Yes. But there's still a lot of cars. <laughs> but that's the, that's the thing.、Uh, even then, it's like parking is what? Up, even $18 up to two, an like, hour? Yeah, I've seen even more, like $40. <laughs> so, so, like, You know, it might like in those t y p e of cities, if there's any semi- city similar to New York City, then it'll be ineffective. But for for other cities that maybe are are a little bit like the traffic is okay, it's, it's flowing, it's good. And,、um, you know, there's areas, especially for like parking lots, maybe that's probably where it could be like、um, thrive more for parking, for either like st-、uh, street parking and parking lots. That would probably be a better idea. But I mean, I think you would have to get the city involved with that for that to really work. So、hmm. that's my two cents. I kind of agree with Josue, though. Imagine、I、the think- tax influx the city's going to get, though, from、well, 
from the company and the people. I mean, I think, I mean, along the lines, what Josue is saying, each city is different because one, uh, some cities do uh, have more of a public transportation infrastructure where other cities yes. like, like maybe LA or San Francisco isn't as, you know, plentiful where you need to have a car to move around or else you're, you know, pretty much stuck. Um, whereas in New York City, it, the city is made or the infrastructure was made where you're able to actually go from point A to point B, taking a bus, taking the subway, taking a train. And to go you, know, you can, yeah, you can get from point A to point B like fairly easily with public transportation. And I think facilitating parking uh, via Google Maps is is a good idea. Hey there, this is Marcos. This is the end of part one of the LTS podcast. Come back on part two for later on the week. Right, Josue? Yes. So it will come back in. Uh, if it's Tuesday, I'll come back Thursday. If it's Thursday, I'll come back Tuesday. And if it's Tuesday, yes. And it keeps on going in a loop. And we are on East Coast time. So I think last time in the last intro, I said four hours or three. I think four hours. Yeah, it's supposed to be three. So don't don't listen to past me. It's three hours, not four. Meaning if you're on the West Coast, you're, you know. If you're, if you're on the West Coast, you're three hours, I think, ahead of us. Or behind behind, us? behind. 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 Yes. Behind. But yeah, thank you for... It doesn't listening. matter because it posts these early in the morning. So thank you for listening to us, to Left Tech and Sundry. Oh, and don't forget, there are Please show notes back. down Please below. Come back. Please come too much. Please. But yeah, there are show notes. There is a link for the merch store. There are all the other things. You know, just read the show notes. And thank you once again for listening to Life Tech and Sundry. Talk to you later. Bye. Have a nice day. Hi there. Thank you for tuning in to the LTS podcast. All the notes and more can be found in the description. By the way, we have a social media page where content is posted regularly. Feel free to reach out at, uh, at us through there or via email. Both are found in the description. When you support the show, we have a merch store where you can buy an item that you like. If buying merch is not your thing and you just want to support the show directly we also have links to those too if you'd like thank you also every comment is really appreciated credits in the description as well peace